Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending July the 22nd, 2022. Wonderful, wonderful summertime uh, weather we've had. Uh, storms have been, you know, we need the rain. Uh, they haven't been too bad uh, around here compared to a lot of places around the country. Hey, we'll take it, right? This week, let's talk about, so of the, of the 21% of companies that have reported in the S&P 500 so far this week, 70% have beat earnings expectations. Accordingly, the market's been going up. But watch out, okay? Bond yields are kind of free falling, okay? They're, they're falling, and they've been falling uh, comparatively uh, pretty, pretty fast. So, so what's, the, uh, what's the difference here? Let's talk about this is a type of time that you need an advisor, right? Why do some investors avoid advisors? Well, a lot of them think that investing is easy, okay? The stock market went up for a long, long time, all right? You heard the expression, the uh, stock market goes up like an escalator and down like an elevator. The most recent bull market ran for about 11 years, and a lot of people now think that making money is easy. The reality is, though, that professional advice really helps. Although the last bull market lasted 10, over 10 years, okay? You know that there are continuous calls that the bull run was over at a variety of times, numerous points during those 10 years, 10 plus years, all right? And a lot of advisors recommend good stocks to let clients know why they should let their winners run, as opposed to there were other times that you know had to know when to get out and when to avoid calamities, all right? Those are times that you need a, a, a good advisor. All right, a good advisor, a fiduciary advisor. Secondly, a lot of people read negative news stories about rogue advisors. You've seen a lot of stories in the industry press about advisors who defraud people. I have actually, uh, in, a, in a previous life, litigated. That's a, when I have, uh, how I got one of my best clients is, uh, is she had uh, uh, issues with a, a, a name brand, <laughs> an advisor at a name brand firm. You would know the firm. Uh, and and actually was involved in criminal activity. So we went into litigation and came on that. And that's that's actually how she came on board later with me as a financial advisor. But when you read these stories, it could cause some people just to lump all advisors into a same group, all right? But according to FINRA, our professional organization, okay, we're a self-regulated industry, in 2020, there were 617,549 registered representatives. There was a report that went on to show that the, of all of those 5,472 uh, investor complaints were received. Of those, 246 individuals were barred and 375 uh, of them were suspended. 970 fraud and insider trading cases were referred for prosecution. If you add the barred and suspended numbers together, that represents about a tenth of 1% of all registered representatives. Okay, so the majority of advisors are ethical. They do a fine job. Unfortunately, that doesn't make breaking news, right? Okay, thirdly, advisors, a lot of advisors, and we're not one of those, but a lot of advisors just do transactional business. So they think advisors are just order takers and don't add value. They rationalize, a lot of people just rationalize they can do the transactions for free online. So the advisor involvement represents simply, basically an unnecessary expense. But the reality is, those types of investors don't understand that online trading platforms aren't run by nonprofit institutions performing a charitable service. There are costs, okay? Advisors offer advice, but investors need to choose to listen, okay? And then there are some people that just think advisors don't care. They think advisors as friendly croupiers in a casino. They're not emotionally invested in your success. The croupier will be just as friendly to the next person sitting down as at the blackjack table when you get up. The reality though there is that most advisors want a long-term relationship. If most advisors are using a financial planning uh, fee-based pricing model, they want their clients to make progress towards those goals. Why? Because when the client does better, uh, the advisor does better, right? So. They want to guide them and try to keep them on track during difficult times. Now, a lot of investors just have 
complete fear of the market. These investors would be better described as just really non-investors. They experienced a severe market downcline, uh, downturn before, a decline. They got burned. They did not get back in. Okay, they want the returns the market's delivered, but they don't want to put their money at risk. They feel advisors will throw them into the market where they'll lose money. Now, the reality in that uh, situation is that compliance wants every client classified within a risk profile. Investment recommendations should align. Good advisors talk to clients about when they will need that money. All right. They can also help clients stick their toes in the water, gradually get comfortable with investing in the markets. Now, uh, most uh, people think that advisors aren't fiduciaries and a lot of advisors that's uh, misuse the word fiduciary from my because of my legal background, in my opinion. OK, but a lot of investors see just multiplicity of ads where they hear ads on all types of media okay you hear them on youtube streaming video uh radio they, and they're usually trashing a segment of the advisory market simply to promote themselves they feel the broad category of advisors are putting their own financial interests first and then the investor can represent their own interests just fine they think thank you very much so why have an advisor but the reality on that is uh, fiduciary isn't really a popular word, or maybe it is. Is a fiduciary really a popular word because it's in all of those advertisements, okay? It's, but it's probably fair to say almost everyone in the advisory business considers themselves a fiduciary. But like I said previously, one of the ways major, major firms achieved this was to level out pricing through wrap fee accounts, okay? The client then makes conscious choices to work with that firm. The choice comes along with cost. Almost everything they buy from the uh, firm comes at a level pricing, okay? Um, can go on and elaborate a little bit further on the term fiduciary. Bottom line with a fiduciary, forget about the, 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 the tier structure, okay, on pricing always, but what we really boil it down to in simplest terms is a conflict of interest. A conflict of interest can be can be waived, okay, can be legitimately waived and worked around through appropriate disclosures. Now, I kind of uh, I kind of alluded to that in the in the previous discussion about about uh, wrap fee accounts, etc., like that, so that everything's on a, on an evil equal level. All right, but we also do transaction free processing and things like that. Bottom line, a fiduciary has to put the clients, regardless of the disclosures, okay, to re remove conflicts of interest. The bottom line on a fiduciary uh, relationship is that the fiduciary has an obligation, a legal obligation, to put the client's best interest first and paramount. We fulfill that daily. Matter of fact, it's, it's very frequently that we'll get uh, situations come in that would be actually um, great for us, but is not quite what was represented to the client after all things are said and done with the deal and you get down to the bottom deliverable at that point we pull back and find other options and then make disclosure to the clients hey this is what we were set out to achieve this is the way that the uh, industry brought back the deliverable to you does it fit your situation not quite therefore we went back to the drawing board and found one or two other options for you to look at what do you think about these you know, in comparison? Here's the difference. And a lot of times it's at, a, at, a, at a, a detriment to our actual fees or commissions that are brought back out of that. But it, we do this because it's what's in the client's best interest. And then the client makes a choice after full and transparent disclosure. That's a big part of being a fiduciary that I fear to say Many, many people out there who call themselves advisors and who also call themselves fiduciaries really fall short in that regard. We don't at Asset Guidance Group, all right? That's part of our philosophy, and that's a prime uh, starting point, uh, the, the, the alpha and the omega on our philosophy. Do what's best for the clients. We can help enough people uh, win if they'll let us find a way to win for them. If we can let, make a, a way to find another enough other people win, get what they want, we'll eventually get what we want and everybody stays happy. Always been a guiding principle uh, in our lives here. All right, let's stop right there for this week. 
and we'll do the remaining uh, items that are on this list because we've got we've got really about I've enumerated about eleven different uh, reasons that people think they don't need advisors. Anyway, good stuff. So uh, we'll do the we'll do the remainder of these next week. We'll do the the second half of these next week, and until then, you stay happy because we know that happiness is the key to longevity. <laughs>